Welcome to another Coffee with Sam. So, uh, where we talk with ASX companies and the guys who run the strategies. Uh, we're here in Sydney, just uh, on the eve, well, not on the eve, on the first day of RIU uh, in Sydney. Uh, I've got Ian Wallen here from uh, Cooper Metals Limited. Uh, ASX code is CPM. Uh, the market cap currently is about 18.4 million, about 4 million cash in the bank. Ian, welcome to Coffee with Samso. Uh, your first in person uh, with us. Um, look, see, we, we've talked with Cooper for a while and you guys have done a bit of stuff. So give us an update on what's happening. Yeah, oh, well, hi, Samso. It's great to be here in person for the first time. For the first time, yeah. yeah. Uh, look, there's a lot happening in Cooper Metals at the moment. Just to um, reiterate for any new investors, we're, we're a Copper Gold Explorer. Our flagship project is in the Mount Isa area, and we've got our team out there at the moment preparing for the RC drilling program that's, that's coming up to test our initial targets, which will start next week. Okay. Um, I looked at your um, announcement, obviously, you guys... Um got a 2000 meter RC program mm -hmm. um, at King Solomon and Python and we I think the last time we spoke that was sort of your your first up target um, prospects yeah uh, you, you're doing a fixed loop uh, test at King Solomon um, and, and, and and ground checking the the, mm. the fixed loop you did at Python so can you give uh, us a, you know, a brief on what how that is going in, in the strategy behind that? Yeah, sure. So after listing late last year, so we've really, we, we're only five months old, we've been spending quite a bit of time in the Mount Isa area um, looking at the old, old workings that are there. So there's numerous old copper gold occurrences in the whole Mount Isa area. And so we've got around almost 1,600 square kilometres of tenure, which is a, a huge parcel of land out there and there's a, a lot of old occurrences that were mined in say the last 100 years where the old timers really just focused on shallow workings so but there's very little drilling or modern geophysics being done over these areas to test if uh, these the mineralization extends at depth so there's obviously been some recent success by some of our neighbors like carnaby where they've been doing exactly that they drilled under nil desperandum and you know they're getting spectacular copper gold hits so we helped to, we hope to sort of emulate that success we know the copper gold mineralization is there but it's a matter of going through all your targets in a systematic way and and testing those so we've gone through a ranking exercise where we've said okay look python and king solomon especially king solomon have an extensive amount of old workings like old shafts and shallow pits etc evidence of copper sulfides so we thought we'll try a, a fixed loop em survey at king solomon and python and that at king solomon came up with a coincident em response with around those old workings and that's what we'll be testing with this initial rc program and also we came up with a em conductor at python and that's looking really exciting too and as you said we went out there and ground truthed it EM conductors can be things like black shale or graphite, which we're obviously not interested in. We want the copper gold. But what we found when we ground truthed at Python, there were no workings around this EM conductor, but we found that there was anomalous sulphur and copper in the rocks. So that's really encouraging. And the geophysicist model says that the mineralization should start about 10 meters deep and get better with depth. So that, that's really encouraging and that's what we'll be drilling as well. So the ground proofing is effectively geological proofing of trying to, to, to find the reasons why you, you have a conductor there. Yeah. The reasons you don't have a conductor in it, some ways. Yeah, so a process of elimination, you get a conductor, um, if it's graphite or black shale, you know, that's not much fun, we don't want that. So <laughs> we're, we're very happy that we found some anomalous sulfur and, and copper there as well. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, just quickly, in terms of um, EM and fixed loop EM, I mean, how different it is without going into the technicalities? Yeah. So um, we, we have a very, you know, good consultant geophysicist that basically, uh, 
consults on all those things for him. So we tell him the geological information, what type of geology or model that we're following, and they will recommend the, the best technique, whether that's you know, induced polarization, IP, which a lot of companies use, and we use that too. So you've got many different things in your geophysical t toolkit, magnetics, gravity, IP, EM, which you can use. I'm not an expert in those fields, so I rely on the experts to say, okay, well, let's, let's use this tool. And uh, we knew that um, there was an EM response at Python because the, the government had done a regional survey, an airborne survey, and there was a, an anomaly near the Python prospect. So we thought, well, let's go do a fixed loop EM, so ground geophysics over that anomaly and that will give us a better 3D idea of what's under the ground. Because the airborne one, airborne EM sort of just tells you there's an anomaly there, but it's, it doesn't give you enough information to really sight your drill mm. holes. So that's why we did the fixed loop EM over that to, okay. to plan the drilling, yeah. It's very interesting, we, we, we touched on this topic how geophysics today is a lot better than you know decades ago. Mm. And over the interviews I've done, um, I, I, I do come across a lot of mm. you talking about geophysics and that very topic, that it is yeah. actually helping people to define it more. So as yeah. a tool, I think it's becoming more, of an in, more important than, yeah. than we think, right? It's not such a broad thing anymore. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah. So, so and, and I guess, you know, base metals is, mm. is good for this kind of stuff, right? It's, it's it's exactly. Gold. And... You know, yeah, so 25 years ago, um, you know, the, the survey equipment these days, like you can put 10 times the current into the ground, so you can put a lot more current into the ground, so you can look deeper and you can get, um, pick up more subtle anomalies. And also the receivers have got so better that the, the geophysicists can, can understand what they're seeing a lot more. And there's just also a massive body, I guess, of... Um, previous work and experience that, that, that people draw on to better mm. refine their models and targeting. So it has come a long way and it's, it's continually improving as it should, yeah. I think in terms of technological advances in our area, mm. you've still got to drill a hole the way you do it and everything else. So yeah. that's, you, people don't think that is, I mean, the, the drill rigs are better, more powerful than anything yeah. else. But I think where geophysics come into play is like you just said, you've got, mm. you can put more power in, you, you can uh, receive it better and mm. define it better. Software's got better. Interpretation yep. with the software is better. And it's, I, I just think that that, mm. that is now more, people should look at more of, um, more important, or, or mm. it, it can do more than previously. Oh, thought. definitely. And I, I think um, it's very cost effective too. So, you know, we're doing uh, this month, we're starting our airborne EM survey or V10 Max, mm. and so that is a lot more powerful, those systems these days, and we can screen, do a detailed survey at, say, 300 metre line spacing, screening our tenure, looking for these, these, these bedrock conductors, um, and you can do that fast and effectively, and, and then that basically gives you, um, you might generate, say, half a dozen targets out of that, you ground truth them, follow them up with ground geophysics and, and, and drilling. So, mm. so there's, it's quite a systematic process and I think it's um, something that everyone you know, should be doing to, to quickly assess your, your ground and get those key data sets that you can work with going forward. Yeah. And it saves a lot of money for people that small caps, right? Because oh, we, yeah. we, we don't have a big bank balance normally. Mm. Um, so, well, yeah. the cost of drilling is getting so much more expensive, so every hole really counts. So you, you, don't want, you want to do that. You want to have good quality, robust targets to test with your yeah, drilling. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and high confidence of yeah. what you think you're going to drill. You know, that's, that's right. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, your other project, Guru, um, you've done some soil geochem. Um, I know uh, we, we sort of understand structural trap sites. Maybe mm. you can just elaborate on that for the guys out there yeah okay so guru project in wa is a copper gold project it's it's uh, not far from silver lakes deflector mine which has got about 1.3 million ounces in it and there's a number of historical 
gold mines in that whole Gullawa, they call it the Gullawa Syncline, which is part of the Gullawa Greenstone Belt. And this, we've got quite detailed geophysics magnetics over that now, and you can see, model the structures, and it's, it's apparent with these large structures that a number of the gold deposits are associated along, uh, or, or along those structures. And that's because, you know, you need a good plumbing system um, to carry the fluids that carry the gold, and then as the gold gets closer to the surface, it can just drop out within those major structures and form these gold deposits, copper gold deposits. So um, also, you know, with the, the nose of the Gullawa Syncline, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an area like we call a favourable tra trap site because it's an area where you often get dilation or open space, which the fluids can then move into and drop the gold out into those dilation or trap site areas. So the, the geochem that we've done, it's pretty well first pass greenfields exploration. Go out there, take soil samples on a grid. Uh, it was a wide space grid, 200 metres. It's come back with a number of gold anomalies. Some of them are quite subtle, gold anomalies. And when we look at these gold anomalies, what we want to see is sort of coherent shapes. And if they're associated with major structures, then they go up in the ranking because you, it, it, it makes sense, it follows our model. So we've done the first pass regional program at 200 metres. Now we've just completed the second pass at a more detail and we're waiting for those assays to come back. Once we get those uh, assays back, um, we'll then be able to do some rab drilling to try and find the source of the gold in the bedrock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess at the end of the day, you know, when you find out the anomaly is X marks a spot, and that's simple, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's just a proven and tried form of exploration that you yeah. need to you need to get out there and take the samples and gather the data and then have a model and assess it in the context of all of that to drive your exploration forward. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Look, um, news flow go, going forward. Yeah. Um, what's what's the guys out there expecting? Yeah. So it's it's really all about Mount Isa East at the moment. Our flagship project. You know, we've started the ground prep for the drilling. The drilling should start next week. We've got a local contractor, so we'll be drilling at King Solomon and at Python. There's a bit more um, regulatory approval we need for Python to to start there but we'll so we'll start at King Solomon first and then the, the V10 Max survey is also starting this month of May as well so that's all locked in so there's quite a lot of uh, you know I, I believe there'll be targets generated out of that and a whole lot of workflow from from that targeting as well so there's a lot of news flow coming up in okay. in the next weeks and months yeah okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um. You know, I, I guess I guess in our, our industry, you know, how, how's you talk to the guys? I mean, you're mm. at RAU this this week. Um, how is the market? Still buoyant? Still lots mm. of legs? Well, you know, just coming from the conference this morning, um, you know, there's a uh, uh, hundred exhibitors there. Um, there's delegates or investors walking around all over the place. It's a very busy. It's a very buoyant vibe. At the moment, mm -hmm. um, despite I guess all the geopolitical issues happening in the world, the, the metal prices are, uh, are still at all-time highs. And you know, I find it hard to to see, um, especially with copper prices, how uh, they can't but ex can, how they they can't but not help to continue to go further higher because you've got the whole transition with the green energy and battery minerals, et cetera, pushing it along. So mm. um, I think it's, yeah, it's still very, very buoyant market out there. It's, it's quite an exciting time in the industry. Yeah, mm. oh, I think I agree. Um, without saying, you know, gung-ho things, mm. I think it's quietly, we're, we're geologists, we've gone through, you know, things, cycles up and down, and we're yeah. sitting there wondering, this looks pretty good, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, as we discussed before, you weigh up all the goods and why it shouldn't keep going and you tend to favor mm. that it is but we never know this market right we don't um, know yeah and we can only control the controllables as they say so we try to generate the targets execute 
good programs, keep our costs down, and everything else is, is out of our control. Yeah. But if we do our job right, we can take advantage of, of um, a buoyant market. Yeah. yeah. All right, fantastic. Look, it's a good update. I know you, you're a busy man. I don't want to keep you here. Um, since this is your first, and, and if you did them do in persons, uh, we, we have joined up with Florence Drummond, who is part of the Indigenous Women um, mm -hmm. Resource in Australia, and we've come up with coffee packages for, you know, uh, victims of coffee with Samso. And um, as a token gift, Thank you very much. That's a nice surprise. I wasn't expecting anything. I'll, I'll have to declare that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they, yeah. they can't become gifts at your booth because I'll be walking oh, by. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be definitely need some coffee over the next three days. I yeah. think, so that's great. You were yeah. complaining you can't get enough coffee. You can brew your own yeah, now. I can brew my own. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you again. Thank you very much. Yeah.